Hi, my name is Paul Fleming and I'm the General Secretary of Equity. Members, activists and colleagues have asked me to do a little bit of an explainer on five commonly asked questions about the current West End Variation Agreement ballot. And I'm going to try and answer them now. Those five questions are what is the deal? Why are we here? What does the union recommend and why? Who's been balloted? And what happens next? So firstly, what is the deal? The deal is to keep our West End Agreement in full operation, in full, with two time-limited exceptions. One is the prorating of pay, no less than £400 a week in a Category C theatre, 420 in a Category B, or five-eighths of the minimum in a Category A. No member will be working for less than five-eighths of what their normal salary would be in any theatre. If you do more than five shows a week, then they're topped up at an eighth a time. If you do extra rehearsals on days where you're not performing, you're paid an additional sixth for the use of that day. This variation will be in place for no later than May 2023, but we will review it every four months. So if West End box office levels reach pre-COVID amounts, the variation will fall away. The second is a Sunday payment, and that's suspended until April 2022 for shows opening after February, which will be most, and a little bit earlier than that for shows which open before February um, of 2021. Why are we here? We're here because we fought off bigger threats. And I realise how frustrating it is for members who only see the tip of a negotiating iceberg. The deal's the tip, but underneath the surface, since March, we've managed to stop the closure of all shows, the collapse of the agreement, the permanent reducing of salaries and other terms instead of a prorating of salaries, the reduction in overtime, a big issue for stage management, and the prorating based on capacity or venue. And that was critical. We did have a world where we were looking at a prorating based on managers' income or the amount of seats they could sell, not the amount of work our members are doing. We're here because of members telling us that they want to get back to work, even if it's part time. Over three quarters of our over 80 deps, both performers and stage management members, support this deal as a way back to work as soon as. We fought off the biggest threats and we don't feel that we can improve the deal any further through negotiation alone. What does the union recommend? Well, we recommend acceptance of the deal. And that's as a result of the support our depths have shown, our stage management committee has shown, our stage committee has shown. Nobody wants to be here. And it's a tribute to the depths, activists and staff that we have an agreement in place at all. But the risks the union believes, of not accepting the deal are threefold. In the best case scenario, if rejected, work does not commence until producers have confidence in box office, box office income. And what with social distancing in place and bans on international travel, that may not be until the end of next year. The second is a middle case, where we have producers offering managers' own contracts, undermining the whole rationale of what the agreement is supposed to do. And that's already happening. And members are forced into a desperate circumstance by a, a failure of government policy, accepting those jobs. The third is that we lose the agreement. That means a loss of loads of things that our members only get because of the union agreement. Maternity pay, the deposit system, redundancy style payments, overtime. We'd be back to square one. We'd be back to 1930. We can't afford to have that deal collapse. We have to keep members protected. The deal is comparable with one that's been offered to every other union and the normal tools of action are not available to us. We can't take industrial action when our members aren't in the workplace. It's a really difficult and unusual position for a trade union to be in. Fourth, who's been balloted? There's two ballots. One is for everybody, performer and stage management members who are working on shows which were open on the 16th of March. The second is for all performer and stage management members who've worked on the West End for the past three years. The first is because that's the group directly and immediately affected. A rejection would mean they can't go back to work and acceptance means that they're going back on prorated pay. It's really important to know how that group feels because they are definitely and immediately affected. The second group, the West End community is bigger than those people, but we have to draw a line somewhere to make sure that we don't include members who've never worked on the West End, don't aspire to work on the West End, don't work as performers or members of stage management. I know the West End community is not just the people who've worked there over the last three years, but we have to draw a line somewhere and that's in line with previous practice. What happens next? The ballot is open until noon on the 13th of October. 
and hopefully you'll be voting yes. Voting yes doesn't mean you like the deal. It means that you're saying that you don't like where we are, but that for a time limited period to allow work to start as soon as possible and the terms of the agreement are important to you, let's return to work now. Doing so increases our power as a union. With members in workplaces, we can better hold producers to account and we can take action if need be. The four month review mechanism means that we're protected if we do have an unexpected return of box office revenue to make sure our terms and conditions are restored in full. I realise this isn't easy. It's not easy for staff who spent their years, sometimes their whole lives, battling for good terms. It's even harder for members who this affects and will likely affect. And I'm sorry that we're here. But we're here because of government failure. We're here because of where the producers will move to. And we're here as a union telling you what we think, being honest and transparent, providing you with as much information and a recommendation based on what our members are telling us. Let's debate it in a comradely way. People who vote against this deal are not great traitors and people who vote for it aren't traitors either. There are legitimate reasons to vote in either direction. But I urge you, for a strong union, for people returning to work as soon as possible, and for our ability to keep our agreement as good as possible, please vote yes 